Buck 66, your Erie.com special report. Good afternoon, I'm Brian Wilk. We interrupt our programming to bring you a special report, an update on the COVID-19 status in Erie County. Here is County Executive Kathy Dahlkemper. As of this moment, there are no new confirmed positive cases that have been reported in Erie County. Contact, contact tracing by the Erie County Department of Health continues. And I want to thank every resident, every person in Erie County who is truly doing their part to help us stay ahead of the spread here in our community. Now that does not mean that we have nothing to worry about. There is an expected time period between testing, lab processing, results, and notification. Be assured that as soon as the Health Department has received notification of a confirmed positive case, that their process of contacting the individual and those they came in contact with begins immediately. Our low numbers are attributed to testing as well as to the adherence to the stay-at-home order. Put simply, by Governor Wolf yesterday, every one of us should assume that we are carrying COVID-19 and everyone we come in contact with is carrying COVID-19. This will make us much more aware of what we need to do to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and our community. As you've heard, many of you may have heard, there was a group of young individuals in Erie County who have been tested for COVID-19 because they were together in a group for a few days. One of those individuals became symptomatic and tested positive for COVID-19. At this point, the Erie County Department of Health advised this group to go to a motel where they would each have their own room and quarantine for 14 days. The individuals in this group declined to go to the motel, so we partnered with them to make the safest accommodations and decisions under the circumstances to protect our community. They have now separated into different locations, and we have regular contact with these individuals and will continue throughout their quarantine period. Our numbers in Erie County remain low because people are listening and practicing social distancing and following the stay at home order. If we loosen up in any way, this virus could out get out of control very quickly. Just yesterday, I was on a phone call with county executives from across this country, and all of them agree that social distancing is the way that we are going to win this battle. I will remind you just to look and see what has happened in China, Italy, New York City, and even in counties surrounding us here in Northwest Pennsylvania. So we need to stay on track and stay home and now I'd like Melissa Lyon, the Director of Erie County Department of Health, who I'm very honored to be with today, up to the podium to explain the importance of social distancing. But before she does, I'm going to do what all of us should be doing, and that is to disinfect the area on this podium that she could potentially touch that I have touched. Melissa? Thank you, County Executive. I'd like to talk to you about how social distancing works and why we have the stay at home order in place and when our numbers are low as compared to other cities across the country. COVID-19 virus is highly contagious and easily spread. While we have low numbers, it is important to keep them contained. We have not yet experienced the community spread that other cities in our state and surrounding states have encountered. That's because we are strongly promoting social distancing in Erie County. To a large extent, many of you are following these guidelines and we appreciate that very much. Unfortunately, there are those who are not following it and we need them to understand why it is vital that they do so. So I thought I'd tell you 
how it works. By avoiding large gatherings and close contact with others, we are keeping ahead of the spread. When people who do not live together come together, especially inside a contained space like a home, an office, or even a grocery store, they can all become exposed, even if someone isn't showing signs or symptoms. Social distancing is crucial for slowing the spread of the virus, and in turn, keeping our hospitals from becoming overwhelmed. When people do not socially distance themselves and insist on seeing others and going places where a lot of people have been, they are not only putting themselves at risk, but also anyone else they may come in contact with. So here's just an example of a potential situation. Imagine a group of friends decide to have a game night at their house. They invite five people to come over. Three of those bring, three of those five bring a friend along with them. One house is now holding people from eight different homes in it. One of those people has COVID-19, but isn't symptomatic yet, it's symptomatic yet, and they don't know. They are sitting around a table, they are touching the game pieces, eating food together, passing plates, hugging, patting one another on the back, and just normal touching. They use one restroom in the home. They all go back to their homes at the end of the night and touch door handles, the fridge handle, and their face as they take the contacts out. They kiss their loved ones goodnight. There is now a potential that each one of those homes are exposed to COVID-19. These people then wake up the next day and get their breakfast, touching that same handle on the fridge. They are going to work at a business that is deemed essential, and they're feeling fine. Three days later, the host of the party starts to not feel well. Coughing, fever, tiredness. She's heard that she could be tested if she has these symptoms, so she calls her doctor to get tested. The testing site tells her to quarantine herself for 14 days while the test results come back. She's not hospitalized because she doesn't need to be. She just needs to go home and take care of herself. She's thinking about all of the people that were there at her house the other night. She gives them a call. They're not symptomatic, but should quarantine just in case. However, they keep moving about the normal daily activities, getting gas, going to the grocery store, taking their kids to the playground, and seeing other friends. She finds out that her test comes back positive, and now all of those people are required to quarantine for 14 days. But they've been doing their thing for the days in between. They didn't take the stay-at-home order seriously. It can go on for weeks and weeks, and the cycle will continue if we don't slow the spread. We understand that asking people to stay away from others goes against our nature, our human nature. Not being able to shake hands or hug seems so unnatural. Standing six feet away from someone to have a conversation is awkward. We get it. If it weren't, for the, if it weren't the absolute best way to slow the spread of this virus, we wouldn't be asking you to do it. It's hard to say no when someone asks if they can come over or if you can go to their house. It doesn't matter how well you know them or that you know their house is clean. You don't know who they've come in contact with or who those people have come in contact with. A seemingly harmless gathering, especially inside, can have an impact on your health and the health of those around you and those that you love. We are asking you to not only think about those you care and know, but about every person that maybe you don't know. As the governor said yesterday, and the county execu executive echoed today, assume everyone has COVID-19, and think about how you would interact with them if they did. It will help protect you, your loved ones, and our community. I would like to hand it back over to county executive, but I as well. We'll wipe down my surfaces.
Thank you, Melissa. I hope every one of you can now see with the great description that Dr. Or, excuse me, Director Lyons was able to put forward to you how important it is that each of us follow the stay-at-home order and social distance from everyone that we don't live with. This is just one scenario of how things can happen. And we know things like this are happening on a daily basis in our community. And again, we can't do this alone. We're asking each one of you to do your part. We continue to hear false reports of information, and we know those are out there too. As I mentioned yesterday, we are starting a rumor hotline. So if you haven't heard news about COVID-19 in Erie County that just doesn't seem accurate, we want to know about it. We have set up the COVID-19 rumor hotline for residents to call with rumors, gossip, or questions. That number is 814-451-6988. That's 451-6986. These lines are open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you have legitimate inquiries, concerns, or symptoms related to COVID-19 in Erie County, then contact our health department at ecdhinfo at eriecountypa.gov or 814 Four five one sixty seven hundred. There have been many questions about the stay at home order, and we continue to try to bring clarifications to that. Guidance is available under resources on our website under the COVID 19 page at eriecountypa.gov, right on the front when you open up our website. We continue to add more information as quickly as we can. The enforcement of the stay-at-home order is everyone's responsibility in Erie County. Law enforcement may be called to a scene where people are not adhering to the order. We're not asking them to make arrests, but they certainly will dis to urge everyone to disperse and to remind you to keep six feet away. Life-sustaining local businesses are, are listed on the DCED, the Department of Economic and Community Development, I'm sorry, the Department of Community and Economic Development website of the Pennsylvania State. And we have a link on our website to what those businesses are. These businesses have been deemed necessary or allowed to stay open by Governor Wolf and his administration. This was not a decision made by the county. This is a statewide ban or allowance, and that can be found on the state website. Our inspectors continue to make their rounds in the community as we have concerns brought forward to us about a business being open or being in non-compliance. As of last night, we had 40 new complaints uh, that were entered into our database, 22 more field inspections were completed yesterday, nine additional today, and today's we had eight in compliance out of those nine. There is a link to essential, as I said, essential life-saving businesses that was outlined by the governor, again, under our resources page on the COVID-19 page on our website, eriecountypa.gov. At the state level, the Pennsylvania State Police released data on actions taken yesterday, March 25th, against non-life-sustaining businesses that failed to comply with Governor Wolf's order, closing those locations, and they said they had 57 total across the Commonwealth. Now on to the case numbers across the state. We now have a total of 1,688 cases in the Commonwealth, which includes the five listed in Erie County. We have a statewide death total now of 16. Two in Allegheny County, one in Butler County, one in Delaware, two in Lackawanna, one in Luzerne, two in Monroe, two in Montgomery, three in Northampton, one in Philadelphia. So as you see, three just to our neighbors to the south of us. 
Again, if you have any questions or concerns about enforcement or symptoms, you should contact the Erie County Department of Health at ecdhinfo at eriecountypa.gov or call at 814-451-6700. And now I would like to turn it over to the questions from our media partners. And today I would like to start with Erie News Now. Hi, Kathy. This is Brianna Andrews. Uh, my first question, you mentioned a group of young adults who work together who are now uh, in quarantine. Are they traveling outside of Erie County? No, they are not traveling outside of Erie County. So before... Uh, before they one had symptoms, were they inside the county when um, the symptoms started showing initially? Yes, they were together within Erie County boundaries. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Erie Times News. Kathy, it's David. Um, just to go back to the to the group again, is this a different group than the one you were tracking last week that was involved with the first case? This is uh, a group connected to one of our positive uh, five cases and uh, we've been in contact with them since last week. But is it the same one you were referring to last week? You, you said there was a group of less than, fewer than 10. Yes, that you were, yes, that's um, the, that is the same group, yes. It's the same group, and you said young, are they young adults? Is, is young adults, they're, they're all young, young, ad, young adults. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Talk Erie. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Kathy, uh, this is Joel Natale question is about testing. Um, does, at this point, does every primary care provider who orders a test, are they able to get a test? Can I answer to that? As long as tests are available, they would have access to that. Our two um, large health care providers, uh, Allegheny Health Network and UPMC, both have testing sites. Uh, Allegheny's has been fully operational since last week. UPMC um, has, I think, limited test this week and should be fully operational next week. And there are other private labs that other uh, physicians' offices are using. I do want to qualify by saying that there are times when someone has mild symptoms and uh, may not be sent. I'm just hearing this uh, anecdotally, may not be sent for a test uh, simply because of the limit we have on tests and uh, those people are told to just obviously quarantine at home and if their symptoms get worse then if that advice might change. But that is the um, purview of the primary care provider, is that correct? Yes, the testing would have to be done with a doctor's order so that would be done by their care provider that is ordered by their doctor. WJETTV? Yeah, hi Kathy, Samir. So um, I want to stick with the testing really fast. So obviously we know if you want to go to places like St. Vincent Swabbing Site or uh, UPMC Hammett uh, Collection Center that you need a primary care physician's order to go there. So what if you aren't, uh, if you don't have a primary care physician, what, what is the step then to go to the emergency room? Uh, no, you should never just go anywhere. You should actually um, call the emergency room. Call, you can call our health department at 451-6700, and we can help you find the right resource you need to go to to speak to before you show up anywhere. The last thing we want is for people to be showing up without an entity, one of those healthcare networks, knowing you're coming because they, we need them to be prepared for anyone coming in who is symptomatic. So I would suggest you call our health department at 451-6700 and there is also a number on the Pennsylvania State Department of Health website and that number could also be called and then those entities will direct you how to find a physician who could give you that order. That's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other media on with us today? Uh, yes, Kathy. Jordan Schreckengoss here from the Cory Journal. Thank you for joining us, Cory uh, Journal. You, thank you. Thank you. You previously recommended anyone who travels outside of Erie County should self-quarantine for 14 days. Now, do you think that applies to Cory area residents who live minutes away from neighboring counties and must go between those counties on a regular basis, either for life-sustaining travel or work in an essential business? 
I think those of us who travel back and forth across state lines for work on a daily basis do not need to do that. And uh, obviously when you go home to Ashtabula, Warren, Crawford, or Chautauqua County, um, you know, you should also be social distancing uh, there as you would in Erie County, even if there isn't a mandated order on that. So, um, you know, we have people in county government who live uh, outside of our county borders and um, they are coming to work. So that's really only for the people that are coming here from another place to stay here for a long period of time and particularly those who are coming from some of the hot spots, you know, New York City being one that we've talked about a lot. But uh, I do recommend Florida, people returning from Florida at this time of year that have maybe have been down there for a few months. Anyone coming back here from one of those places where they have been residing or spending any period of time. But for those who just travel back and forth, happen to live in one of those bordering counties, uh, no, they do not need to self-quarantine um, for 14 days. Thank uh, you. Erie Times News, or I'm sorry, Erie News Now. How about Erie Times News? Do you have any other questions? Sure, Kathy. Um, you, you mentioned there was one um, business not in compliance. Was that the same business from that you referred to yesterday, or is that a different business? And what's the outcome of that? You know, I, ha I haven't um, gotten any word on what business that was, or if it was the same one. I actually just got those numbers uh, right before I went on air here, and so um, I will have more information on that. But. Uh, most businesses, once we go out and they're non-compliant, you know, we post on their, on their business that they need to uh, shut down if they aren't in compliance, and then we follow through with those businesses uh, tomorrow to make sure that they are being compliant at this point. Talk, Erie? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, Kathy, I, it sounded like the governor was saying that they were going to extend the school closures past April 6th. It sounded like a new order was coming down on the 30th to go another two weeks. Have you gotten any information on that, or did I mishear that? Um, we have not gotten confirmation on that, I don't believe, but I could have missed something today. Um, you know, the schools obviously are not under county jurisdiction, so, um, you know, we probably get the news on that. Um, close to the time that any of you get the news on that. So I don't have any further information on the school closures at this point. Um, how about WJET-TV? Yeah, hi, Kathy Samir again. So um, this is either for you or Melissa or possibly both, if uh, you both have a comment, I guess, for this. So Governor Tom Wolf obviously mentioned uh, someone asked about megabuses uh, going between the states. So what about when it comes to the Erie Airport? Are we thinking about possibly uh, closing it down or canceling flights to and from areas that have like high numbers? Because I know we've mentioned like uh, traveling and possibly suspending that. So I guess, uh, any, is there any discussion on that right now? So airports are run under the FAA. Um, they are out of the jurisdiction of you know, county government in terms of flights and, and, and air travel. That would really be a national uh, decision that would be made. But I go back to what we've asked is that anyone who does return here from a trip away, that they actually quarantine themselves for 14 days before they go back out into our community. So, you know, whether you're coming from a trip to Las Vegas or whether you're coming from spending months in Florida or whether you're coming home because you don't want to be in New York City anymore uh, and you're coming to be with your parents uh, here or any other um, scenario like that, uh, any scenario really, I would suggest, um, strongly suggest that you quarantine yourself for 14 days so that you don't infect our community with any virus that you might have acquired. All right, and then I have a follow-up question as well. So um, with places like Walmart and grocery stores obviously seeing a decent amount of people coming through, and I know we've asked uh, people to socially distance themselves. So has there been any uh, discussion, I guess, of possibly asking places like Walmart to implement like just a pickup style? Uh, to implement, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part of your question. So um, to have people like kind of like, I know Walmart has the mobiling, mobile order where you can uh, select your items and just pick it up. So I guess, uh, have you ever, have, are you currently discussing anything like that for stores to implement that instead of having 
uh, community members go into the store and actually pick up items themselves. Well, most of those stores have that ability, and uh, that's one of the great things, and encourage people to do that if you're able to order ahead of time where you can just pull up and, and get your items. Um, I know Walmart has that. The grocery stores have that. Uh, so uh, any store that has that, I would recommend you do that. The best thing you can do is stay out of a building. Um, stay out of any building that's not your home. And so if you can find ways to do that, uh, all the better. If you're going to pick up dinner at a restaurant and that if, you, if that restaurant is willing to just meet you at the door, that is best. So the more you can stay out of a building where there would be surfaces, surfaces that somebody else might have touched that you can then touch and potentially pick up the COVID-19 virus, the better for you and the better for those people who work there. Um, again, when you go home, you know, I'm asking people not to use the reusable bags right now, which again goes against everything I've always preached, but don't use reusable bags unless you're going to wash them thoroughly, but use the disposables and then throw them away. Uh, change your clothes after you've been inside of a store and those type of things. But I know for um, many people, uh, ordering online is a way of life and something they're used to doing. For others, it's not. It's a good time to try it and test it if you haven't done it before. How about the Cory Journal? Do you have another question? Not at this time, thank you. Thank you. Erie News Now, do you have any other questions? Yes. Um, one question is, uh, our viewers are a little confused right now as of why golf courses are closed but Presque Isle is open. Why is that? So, um, the governor and his administration made the decisions on what stays open and what doesn't. Um, for me, I see the benefit of Presque Isle being open and that people can actually get out and walk and move and, and get some fresh air. Uh, fresh air is good for all of us and being outside is good for all of us. As I mentioned, um, you know, being inside is more dangerous than being outside. But when you're at Presque Isle, you need to social distance yourself. So it's a big, um, many, many acres out there. It's a big place. You know, as long as you can find your own space out there, then I think that that is a good place for people to be. Um, but obviously, we don't want people gathering in, uh, in groups out there. And uh, I would recommend, obviously, that, that uh, Presque Isle, and I think that they are at the state parks, helping to uh, reduce the incidence of that potentially happening on that piece of uh, land. But golf courses, you know, I think um, you got four people golfing together, often close together. I don't really know the reasoning, but you know, that was decided. All these decisions were made on the state level. They were not um, made with any kind of consultation with the counties. Because if they had, there would be some businesses that are open that I probably would have recommended, no, that they shouldn't be open. But again, those decisions are made by the administration and we're abiding by what they have decided. Also, I just wanted to follow up uh, about the United Way. I know there's a significant shortage of volunteers right now. Is the county working with United Way to help out with this shortage? So United Way and Serve Erie have band together, um, and people can call 211, um, and they will be guided to uh, those organizations and the needs that they have. So particularly, I know there's need for volunteers in homeless shelters. Um, we're asking, obviously, that people be an adult, 18 or over, but we're also asking that people be healthy and not be living with people who are compromised uh, physically either. Because if you are living with somebody who maybe is battling cancer or has heart disease or has some other um, underlying condition that could make them more at risk for COVID-19, we ask you to please, um, to please, you know, uh, think about that when you're volunteering and make sure that you volunteer. Uh, the healthy people get out there and volunteer because they do need you. So 211, that uh, began today. Thank you. So I guess there's a viewer concern that Melissa and I were using some germy papers. Um, we did wipe off the area around us. She had her own set of papers. I had mine. Uh, but, you know, again, we're all trying to be as careful as we can. Um, do we make mistakes sometimes? We all do. Uh, we're all trying to make sure that we are uh, doing the right thing. But one thing I will tell you, every day when I'm done with this, and actually when I'm done with doing anything, first thing I do is I go and sanitize my hands, either with hand sanitizer or with soap and water. And at the end of the day, I go home, I take off my clothes, I put on new clothes before I do anything in my house. So I appreciate that 
uh, viewer's question and concern. Uh, Erie Times News, do you have another question? Yes, Kathy. With having two straight days without any cases, and you addressed this a little bit in your opening remarks, are you, is there any more reason for optimism that we may see really a low number of cases in Erie County? Are you more optimistic about that than a few days ago, or is this more of kind of an aberration? I, I'm not really sure which one it is, David, but I will say the more we can continue to socially distance, stay at home, I think the better off we're going to be. Uh, as I said, I was on a call with um, the county executive from King County last night, Washington, uh, D Washington State, which is where Seattle is. Uh, Chicago was on that call. That's Cook County. A um, couple counties in Texas, other counties. There was quite a few of us on the call. And um, social distancing was the one thing we all kept saying is the tool we all need to use. Some of these counties are in much worse place than ours. It got away from them. They recommended anyone who can put this social distance uh, stay-at-home order in place do so as soon as you can. Um, I got a call today from one of our other counties not too far from us asked me how we got it done. They wanted to know how they could get it done in their own county. So uh, I think everyone's looking at what tools do we have to stop the spread of this. And uh, we're doing the right thing here, but we cannot let up at all. As I said, if we let up at all, the virus is going to take over in our community and in a way that will be very devastating. And if I can just follow up uh, one more question about the group that you guys are monitoring. How confident are you that that group now, all in their separate locations, they are following the, the self-quarantine guidelines? We are in touch with them on a daily basis um, and sometimes even have it to the point where we have visual contact with them so that we know where they're at and, and what they're doing. And they've been very cooperative. And so uh, we're grateful for that. And we hope that uh, all will be well 14 days and, and then they'll be able to go about their um, life as the rest of us are with social distancing but back to a, a little bit more of a normal uh, situation. And do you know when that 14 days is up? Uh, I'd have to look back. I don't remember. It's uh, about another week and a half I believe that they have. So, And you have to remember that if you have somebody in your home who is positive and you are all quarantined and someone else in your house becomes positive Anyone else in that house at that point stays quarantined now for another 14 days. So it's not like it's just 14 days and done. If someone else in that household gets uh, COVID, has a positive COVID-19 uh, diagnosis. So that is the concern with more than one person being in a location. And that's why the original offer was that everyone go to a motel and be in a separate room, and then it would be 14 days and done. But that's, we, you know, we did some, something a little different, but uh, we are very confident that they know the ramifications of this and that they are following the guidelines that we put forward. Talk, Erie. Okay, uh, Kathy, this is going to be a little bit uh, in left field, but... PennDOT has closed both rest stops on I-90, meaning that interstate travelers who need facilities are not going to those controlled areas, either in Northeast or West Springfield, but private gas stations and truck stops, which would be also used by Erie County residents. Does that cause the public health system here in Erie County concern? It causes me concern, Joel. I was not aware of which... Uh, rest areas were reopened and which ones were not. When they decided uh, initially to close all rest areas across uh, Pennsylvania, I made a call right away to PennDOT about this very thing. I said, you're putting everyone else at risk. Um, and I think actually anyone on the road at risk because if a truck driver is feeling sleepy and they can't pull over, then they're going to pull over someplace else that's less safe. I also um, have concern just about general hygiene and uh, the fact that people may use outdoors for, for you know, their personal needs. And so those, I think, are just c compounding the issues we have right now. So PennDOT, I know, did a, um, a, little, uh, a limited open rest stops, and we got a bigger list uh, either yesterday or the day before. Um, but I will contact somebody from PennDOT today, and I thank you for bringing that to my attention because I was not aware that the two um, in, uh, along I-90 in our county were, were both closed. So I will check on that. So thanks for bringing that up. 
Uh, WJET TV? Yeah, hi, Kathy. Uh, I want to circle back to, I guess, the quarantined group. So all of those uh, people being quarantined, no one uh, became symptomatic. So, like, that's only one confirmed positive case out of that entire group. Um, I can't speak to that exactly, but uh, that there are um, there is more than one positive case is what I'll say. So I guess it would be either one, three, or four. <laughs> um, I can't get into the details of that, but uh, you know that's the problem when you're together with somebody who is positive is you have a good chance of becoming positive yourself. So I can just say that uh, you know we are monitoring this group very closely. Um, and, uh, you know, there could be more positives that come out of this, and that's what happens when you're in a family group, and a family group would be anyone who lives or is living in the same household with others who become positive. And that's why it's important that everyone else quarantine themselves from the active case, and that would be including use of the bathroom, um, because any surface they touch, whether it be the kitchen microwave or the kitchen refrigerator or anything in the bathroom or a door handle, on and on. There's so many things that we commonly touch that the other people in our household touch. And uh, I don't think there's, it would be very difficult for all of us to stay completely desanitized, sanitized against that when we're living in the same household with people. How about Corey Journal? Do you have any last questions? If not, we'll go back to Erie News now for any last questions. Kathy, um, this is a two-part question. So the first part is, what are the current conditions of hospitals in Erie County? Various is the social distancing and staying at home order making a difference in the demand of medical staff to the patient's ratio? I don't have that information. Let me ask Melissa if she has any further information on that. We don't really have that information at this point. Um, I would suggest you know, reaching out to those hospital uh, facilities and asking them at this point. And you had another question, did you say? Or is that the only one? I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, uh, I, can. I was I can curious, hear. is there an update on the negative test results as of today? I do not have those numbers and it's, um, you know, it's becoming very difficult for us to keep up with all of the numbers on all of these different things that we're trying to track. Um, but uh, I do have the positive numbers for you and we'll continue to report on that. Thank you. And uh, Erie Times News, do you have any last questions? Yes, Kathy. Uh, we keep getting um, reports from, from readers that there are patients with coronavirus in local hospitals. Just want to confirm with you, none of the cases, none of the confirmed cases have been hospitalized. None of the confirmed cases are in uh, our hospitalized period, and uh, we have no um, knowledge of any confirmed cases in any of our hospitals within Erie County. So again, the confirmed cases we have are all fairly young, 20s and 30s, uh, fairly healthy people um, who uh, we expect will convalesce at home and have a full recovery. And talk Erie, do you have any final questions? No, ma'am, thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, WJET TV, uh, you can finish this yeah, off with any final um, questions you might have. Yep, one more question. Okay, so um, if let's say another uh, positive case uh, does arise and they don't have, I guess, a proper area within their house to quarantine, does the county have set locations, like I guess with this group where you guys would house them? So we are, have been working on that um, since the beginning, and we are currently um, setting up. We, we, we would have a location today if we needed to, um, and we're setting up um, more permanent uh, solutions to that problem because we do believe that there will be those incidents where someone is not able to quarantine away from people in their home. Let's just say, for example, if there was a house with only one bathroom and there was a number of people living in there, they're not going to be able to quarantine away from everyone else. Or, of course, we do have a homeless population who spend their nights in shelters and there could be someone from that population. Or there could be other incidents of maybe even somebody who traveled through this county and and is sick and ends up here, but they don't really have a home here. So 
it could be a myriad of reasons why someone would need to be quarantined in some place that was not their home. And so we know as county government and as the entity really responding to this crisis that that is something we need to provide and we're working on that. And then also what goes into that? So I guess does the county supply uh, like their food for them, et cetera? Do you go a little deeper into that? Yes, uh, we do. We provide their food. Um, we provide them the ability to wash laundry, um, basic needs, necessities that they would have. Um, and so there's many things to be looked at in this. Uh, we have a whole logistics team that is working on this piece of it. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot that would go into that. Um, and as we get further along, if it makes sense and there's more questions on that, I certainly could bring um, on to uh, one of my news conferences somebody from our emergency management division who um, is in the middle of this. And it's, it's kind of similar to what they would do even if we had um, a natural disaster, you know, if we had a tornado or something like that that wiped out the places for people to stay. Uh, how do we set up temporary living for those people? It's, it's the same type of process that they know how to do and do very well. And obviously this is what's going on with the current case with the group? Um, I don't want to get into the specifics about the group, but they're in locations where we feel very confident that they are following the guidelines and that ultimately the community is safe. And that's what we needed to make sure, that the com they're in a good safe place for themselves and that the community is safe from potential exposure that they would have if the COVID-19 was taken out into the community through this group. So uh, we're in a Is good place. Is it in place, Erie, though. like the city of Erie? Uh, it's in Erie County. So that's all I can say. Okay. And remember, the city of Got Erie it. is part okay. of Erie County, but so is Summit, so is Mill Creek, so is Waterford, Albion, Northeast, uh, on and on. We have 38 municipalities, and uh, all of these cases are in Erie County. So with that, we'll conclude uh, today's press conference. Again, thank you to our media partners who are helping us get the right word out. Remember that we now have, not only do we have the care line or the chat line where people can call if they're feeling anxious, if they're feeling that they need to talk to someone, but now we have the rumor uh, hotline. If you're hearing things that just don't sound right and, and you wanna know if it's true or not, you can call our rumor hotline. All of these numbers can be found on our county website, eriecountypa.gov, and uh, you are more than welcome always to call uh, our health department if you're not feeling well or you don't know what to do about testing or you have uh, concerns about some of the things that we brought forward at 451-6700. And lastly, the rumor hotline is 451-6986. So as always, thank you to our residents of this community. Thank you to the people for helping us do the job that needs to be done here, staying at home, washing your hands, practicing good hygiene, staying in if you feel sick at all, and if you have symptoms and you don't feel well and think you may have COVID-19, please contact your health care provider. And finally, please stay home, please stay safe, and please stay calm.